Well, let's maybe get rid of the word publishing, because at the end of the day, what can't define the work that we do is the method of distribution. It's not about whether it's written with a quill pen or whether it's flipped to the uh, to a to a bird that flies 100 miles or whether it's spoken in a microphone. It's about the quality of the news and information that defines what we do, regardless of method of distribution. The New York Times and the International Journal Tribune reach more readers than I could have ever imagined possible 20, 30 years ago. And that's the power of what we do. So the term publishing is not the way to look at it. Quality content, critical to keeping democracies vital. And uh, that's, our, that's our business. I see two fields. There's, there are good chances and fair chances for the traditional media business. But there is a total new business coming up in the last 10 years. And in this business, the publisher, of course, is the audience. Uh, it's not anymore the, the monopoly you had as a publisher or as an editor with this famous two-step flow of communication that you go from one who had the mission stage over the media to the rest of the audience, if you be on Facebook, and if you put questions, as I have put for the last two weeks, you get incredibly good answers by 10 to 12 people, incredible good answers, who are experts outside of the digital media. <laughs> so uh, in my company, we are working on both fields. We are very exact and precise with traditional media, which are about 200 magazines. Uh, the German market is a very mature market. It's difficult to come up with new magazines, but there is a lot of good chances outside in the international market. So we develop the international market through magazines, especially in India, in Far East. There are good opportunities. And um, so just to give you um, an idea about our revenues, we have in the traditional media, we have 30% uh, uh, of our revenues in traditional German media. We have 25% uh, in international media, but we already have at the end of the year, 35 in the new media. That means at the end of the year, the new media will overpass the national, not yet international or national. So, and it's much more on commerce than on advertising. The biggest, the biggest enthusiasm, what is enthusiasm? Uh, disappointment was of course that we all believed that the revenue coming through Focus Online or other online could be compared to the revenue in advertising that gets print. And it's not more than a tenth. This has been the famous sentence with the lousy pennies I did here uh, two years ago. So this is uh, to, to um, answer the question of Yossi. The traditional publisher will be in the traditional media, but on the new media, it is on community, it is on experts, and there are so many people who have now the chance the chance to expose themselves without additional media. I think a lot, of, a lot of what you said is absolutely right, and uh, the next big challenge for those of us in this, in the journalism field, is to better adapt to social media as we move, I think, and uh, Eric, I think, is going to be here later tomorrow, right? Uh, he may disagree, as we move increasingly from search to social. So how to better integrate all of what we do into that world. And um, I'll just give one small factoid. Um, a New York Times article is tweeted every four seconds, which is a pretty powerful thought. Um, but we, we are going to increasingly do, do 
do more of that. Now, you mentioned uh, digital um, advertising and said it's 10% uh, roughly. Ours is higher than that at the New York Times and growing dramatically. And as many of you in this room know, we are moving in, in some period of time, sometime this quarter, to a, a new model that will basically be a metered model for the web. So we are going to be building a circulation, if you will, a readership revenue base as well as advertising. But one of the joys, at least of where I sit at the Times, is that 80% of our major print advertisers, the top 50 advertisers, 80% of them now are in digital as well, direct through us. So we have control of the relationship with our readers and control of the relationship with our advertisers. And that's a critical element of our success. So how do you see news when it has become a commodity? News, I mean, it's called newspaper. Has news become a commodity? Um, to a certain degree, news has been a commodity since radio, really since the telegraph. Uh, there was a wonderful um, a vignette of uh, a New York publisher writing in his own paper, and I think it was the Herald, that he had just witnessed the death of newspapers. He said literature would survive, but newspapers were bound to fail. He had just met the Telegraph. It was the 1850s. All right. Radio was going to kill newspapers. In fact, we were chatting backstage. A New York Times story I'm embarrassed to report said that radio was going to mean that no one was ever going to learn how to read again. Wrong. So there are increasingly methods of communicating that are very powerful, that are integrated, and that's great. And that's, that's, that's critical. But based on what knowledge, based on what quality information, how do you know what to trust? And that's where I think journalism plays the central role. Because you, we all know in this room that among the fastest things to go viral our lies. Why? Because lies can be outrageous. The truth is often interesting, but rarely outrageous. So lies go faster than truth. That's why we need quality news and information, regardless of how it's distributed. Because if you want to know what's happening in the war in Iraq, it probably makes sense to listen to people who are there. So, you know, and we can, that could lead us into Wikipedia, uh, sorry, WikiLeaks, if you'd like. <laughs> Wikipedia's wonderful too. Uh, different, different game. Uh, but how we filter, maybe that's the right word, how we filter in an honest, thoughtful way the morass of information we're besieged with now, that's critical. Yeah. You'll see. Um, do you have another question, or can we just open it for a couple of minutes to the public? Mukesh, what do you think about the future of newspaper? The, the intellectual head of Google, who is with us. I do that. <laughs> Give the man a mic. You agree? <laughs> It's not about the message of distribution. <laughs> it's not a distribution. <laughs> there we go. Now, now we can hear. Yes. It's not about the distribution problem. It's about the creation of my content. Right? No, I agree with you. It is about how content is created, not how it is distributed. Because the web is just a mechanism for people to consume content, whether it's audio content, video content, or printed content. Uh, I'm actually very amused by the fact that you were just now negating a lot of pre-signed predictions of people about radio was going to get people not to read. Yet you sat there and made a prediction about social was going to give, search was going to give way to social. So I'll be interested to exactly. see that. Well, I'm, I'm prepared for my prediction to be totally wrong. Good. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have one of the best publishers I know in Germany and one of the most successful, my friend, Dirk Hippen. Yeah. 
My statement would be very short, and I would like to quote Mark Twain. A, a newspaper in New York had uh, opened the news that he had died, and, and Mark Twain famously answered, well, news about my funeral are highly exaggerated. So we all know Mark Twain did deceive one day, but it's a long, long time. Here in Germany, we are still quite optimistic for local newspapers, and of course we are trying to, to get the digital content also in digital age. But one question, Mr. Sulzberg, what is your opinion to the paid content model via iPad? What's my opinion on the paid content model? Um, well, I think one of the one of the joys of the era we are in is the ability it gives all of us to um, try things, to learn, to test, to adapt. Um, a couple of years ago, we did a paid version for a part of our content. We called it Time Select. It was uh, the editorial uh, op-ed writers, the Tom Friedmans and uh, Nick Kristofs uh, and, and whatnot. Um, and it was successful, but it didn't have the great growth potential that we think it needed. So we adapted, changed it, and now we're going to be introducing a metered model. What does a metered model mean? It means that it will not be a hard and fast wall. That search will enable you to come into the site. But you will be able to come into the site for a certain number of page views every month. Uh, that number has not yet been made public. It means that uh, you will, at a certain level, be asked to pay either on a monthly basis or some other, not only on, uh, on, uh, on the web, but also on your mobile devices. Um, and it's going to give a lot of, of ability, I think, to a test, learn, and adapt. But what we have found in the app world, which is a world I think we all feel we're moving to, uh, uh, not entirely, sir. <laughs> Uh, is that people are showing a willingness to pay for something that they feel is important. And sometimes that's a game, and sometimes that is uh, a way of knowing what your restaurant reviews, and sometimes that is quality journalism. 